In the Quick Start Guide, we took a look at the free transform tool, which allows us to quickly move, scale, and rotate our selection in space. This tool can do a lot more than that, actually, and that will be our topic for the next three videos. We're going to first take a look at the different modes offered by the transform tool, and we will then focus on the first two. The transform tool features five modes that can all be found in the tool options docker. You already know the first one, which is toggled by default when you call the tool, and that's called the free transform. The second one is the perspective mode, which allows you to conform your selection to your scene's perspective. The third mode is called warp. At first glance, it looks a bit like Photoshop's warp transform type, but it can also achieve that puppet warp effect. In this mode, you can deform your selection using control points that are either predefined or added by hand. The fourth mode is the cage transform. This one allows you to deform the image using control points. It is different from the warp mode though, as you have to define a closed shape by hand first, and it works on the silhouette of your selection, while the warp mode can also work inside of it. The fifth and the last mode is one I fancy quite a lot, the liquify. In liquify mode, you get to sculpt your selection by brushing on it. With it, you can not only move pixels around, but also grow, shrink, or even twirl it. Looking at the five transform modes, we can split them into two categories. The first two help you to place your selection, while the last three are sculpting tools in essence. So right now, we are going to talk about the perspective transform and to see how to use it along with the free transform tool for game art. The perspective transform gives you the ability to move the corner points of your selection's bounding box individually. By doing so, you can place this plane in a scene in one, two or three point perspective. If you zoom out or squash your selection pretty hard, you'll see red circles. They are vanishing points. Click on one of them and drag it around to see your transform's edges aim towards it. As your transform's bounding box is a 2D plane, you can have up to two vanishing points on screen, depending on where your lines intersect. We've seen with the free transform that we can rotate the plane in space, which is sometimes enough to place our selection in a perspective scene. But the perspective mode is here to cover the other cases, where the free transform is not enough. In 2D games themselves, we rarely need it. The reason is that often we have side views or top-down views or isometric perspective, in which cases the free transform is enough. But it's a feature you'll most likely use when creating illustrations and concept art. Let's now see both modes in action. I've got a house design here that could use some more details. On separate layers, I painted a few textures to apply on different sections of the building. There is also a door and a window in front view. That's a typical setup for a concept artist. These assets are modular components we can reuse to our heart's content. As game artists, we rarely have to draw a unique asset with a unique style in a unique environment. As far as houses are concerned, for example, we're likely going to design an entire village all at once with similar buildings. We can play with their respective proportions, add extra floors, rooms, make some more vertical than others, but we'll reuse materials and shapes for all of the concepts. The transform tools are great at that. I can pick one of my texture using the R key, duplicate it with the Ctrl J shortcut, and then fire up the free transform tool. I rotate my selection in space, place it on one of the walls, resize it to fit the drawing scale, and done. Almost done. Often, we still have to copy our texture around, erase the overlapping parts with a soft brush, and to clip the result to the wall's layer group. You'll then often have to paint over your texture to really pimp it up. But the overall process is still fast and flexible. 
We'll even see in the future that we can do all of that non-destructively thanks to masks. I'm going to redo the same operations for the other visible wall. Now we are left with the doors and the windows that we have to add. The wall texture I placed fast with the free transform as it's not too detailed and it doesn't add too much contrast to the scene. For the door though, we're going to use the perspective transform mode. So let's pick the door, duplicate it, and select the perspective transform mode. I'll just drag the corner points to both scale and place the door in perspective. The bottom is easy to put in the right place, as you just have to align it with the bottom of the wall. And we'll then eyeball the top edge's position and angle. The advantage of this transform mode is that we can play with the proportions of our selections very easily. I could make the top of the door larger to give it a more cartoony look, for instance. Also, if your document is big enough, feel free to apply multiple transforms in a row if it makes your job easier. I prefer to move and scale my selections with the free transform tool and to then use the perspective mode to tweak the texture. That's what I'm doing for the window. Now, the asset is still missing a roof texture. The thing is, the roof is actually curved and we can't place our texture with the transform tools we know. To solve that problem, we will have to look at the sculpting-related transform modes. And that's the topic of the next video. See you there.